Topic of the day. Is it uh, Robin Hood and GameStop and uh, all the Wall, all Wall Street stuff? Um, I can tell you I am not a great Wall Street explainer uh, or even an understander. Uh, so I can tell you this. Some people are going to get rich and some people are going to lose everything they have. Anyway, that's not the topic of the day. Uh, is it vaccines? No, I told you I'm not doing that. Um, what about YouTube commercials? Because I uh, had an interesting thing happen and I'll share that with you in a little bit. And when I uh, put this up as a live event last night, I think I used the word logarithms, and what I meant was algorithms. Another thing that I also can't tell you what the difference is between, because I'm not a mathematician. But anyway, good morning. Welcome. I'm Pastor Jeff Elliott from New Horizons Fellowship here in New Haven, Indiana. It is Tuesday. Uh, no, it's not Tuesday. It's Thursday, February 4th. See, I just read whatever I type in there. It probably was Tuesday when I typed it. So anyway, uh, glad you're here today. Um, this is our last week here at the church. I think I've got to figure out how to hold this thing right to tell you about this. Uh, this is our last week for collecting food don donations for the New Haven Food Bank. Here is a, uh, a web link that you can type in and uh, donate financially, and the profits, the proceeds, will go to... Uh, the New Haven Food Bank. We appreciate you doing that. It's a little odd this year with uh, all the restrictions and things we still have going on, so we wanted to make that available to you, um, and you can do that, and we'd, we'd appreciate and encourage you to do that. Anyway, also encourage you to, to share, like uh, the these videos. I'm sitting a little bit close, aren't I? <laughs> Scooted in on me. Okay, there we go. Um, uh, and pass these along. We want to uh, make sure we're reaching as many people as we possibly can with all this. Anyway, as you know, we normally start with a couple jokes. Um, uh, these uh, are varying degrees of quality. One of them I tried out on my wife and kids last night, and my wife and one of my kids laughed. Uh, my daughter doesn't laugh at anything that I do, uh, although I know deep inside she thinks I'm incre incredibly hilarious. So anyway, but these are all kind of like uh, the wife is the theme, and I'm not trash and wise or anything like that but it's more like this here let me give you an example my wife is mad at me she called me lazy and i didn't even do anything see kind of like that that's the, the vibe the uh and the next one i switched all the labels on my wife's spice rack i'm not in trouble yet but the time is cumin i'm sure whoever wrote that joke thinks that the spice cumin is pronounced cumin uh, and so it was a play on words, but I wanted to get that off my list. Last one, this is the one that made my uh, wife and son laugh, laugh last night. Uh, I decided to make sure my wife woke up with a big smile on her face this morning, and I can't have Sharpies in the house anymore. There you go. Hope they're off to a great day. Uh, anyway, we're our Thursday most of the way through the week here in Indiana where we are. Uh, it's going to get really cold today or tomorrow. Uh, and some more snow again. Um, hopefully we will be in the building for services this Sunday, but we're supposed to get some more snow, not not just today, but also some more on Saturday night. Um, if we do cancel services, just to let you know if you're out there, uh, we put it on our Facebook page right here where you're watching me. Um, I sent out an email to everybody in our congregation that I have, uh, and I believe um, I did it somewhere else. I think it was WBCL, the local radio station. Um, which is, which one is that? 90.3, I think it is. Um, anyway, so if we do have cancellations and things like that, you can always check there. Uh, your face, this Facebook page and your email will be the best place to go. Um, I say that because we canceled last Sunday because we had eight and a half inches of snow here where we are. And, uh, it came late Saturday night and it just wasn't time to get it cleaned up to get into church. Anyway, so back to this idea of the YouTube logarithms. Uh, I guess I should start with something that happened the other day. It's not the first time this happened, but I was on my phone the other day. Uh, I needed to get an oil change in my car, and I was looking for a, a closest uh, oil change service place. It was Jiffy Lube. Uh, so then, um, a couple hours later, uh, I get on my computer, and I'm scrolling through, and in my Facebook feed, there's a Jiffy Lube commercial. Um, not for the specific one I was looking for, but you've had something like that happen, right? Um, you do realize that the time that we spend on social media is closely monitored by those social media sites, Facebook and whoever else, and there are algorithms that are written to determine what is of interest to you. Amazon does a good job of it too. Um, 
like if you search for something in Google, if you go into Amazon, there's ID that will come up and hey, you might be interested in this. Um, so anyway, you realize that there are sources out there that know how to program these algorithms to see how much time we spend on something, what it is that we're interested in. Uh, and surely I'm not the only one. I've had it happen a number of times. Uh, you've probably had that happen as well. So you can relate to that. Um, most The most common commercial, usually in my office, I listen to some sort of music on YouTube uh, as I'm reading, studying, whatever. And I, the most common one I get is, uh, especially on YouTube, is this um, young, confident, a aggressive guy who never has his shirt on right uh, he's talking about fitness he's yelling at me telling me I should stop worrying about carbs and cardio and you know and then he's gonna go on to tell me about his fitness plan I've never got that far and he's annoying and I can't stand him and I can't wait to skip his ads um, another thing that I hate about YouTube is now when the video is over they play ads at the end too so if I've just listened to music I gotta go stop the ads at the end of the video too uh, another one I get is from a, a place for, I, I guess it's uh, one of those places they don't believe the mainstream media, right? And they're offering their news, their news service. And, you know, maybe they've heard me say on here how hard it is to know who to trust for news. But anyway, so those are the, the, the common ones. And I'm like thinking through, so what does YouTube know or think about me based on the commercials they're giving me? Apparently they think I'm interested in health and fitness. Um, news that's not from the mainstream media. Um, what else comes up? There's a couple other things that come up regularly. I can't remember right now. Um, so, but I, there's times where I go, I'm really not, in, especially the guy with his shirt off, I'm really not interested at all in that. And I wonder what it is that I have told YouTube that I, that I, that makes this guy keep coming up over and over and over. It may be that he starts playing because I've got several other things going on. And because it goes, you know, 10, 15 seconds into it, they think I'm interested before I can get to skip the ad. Um, but anyway, I, I often wonder what is it that YouTube, think, who do they think I am and what am I interested in? But the idea that um, someone knows my thoughts is a little scary, right, for all of us. Um, last week I talked about the idea of Big Brother, uh, video cameras everywhere, and the fact that uh, and God knows us and our thoughts and can see uh, us everywhere at any time. Um, so I, as I was thinking about that concept of YouTube and realizing that, um, you know, they, they think they know my thoughts, and they do to an extent, I was reminded of a passage in Psalm 139, which we'll start with today, the first couple verses, first four verses. Psalm 139 says, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me, you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. Now, we didn't do this one last week, but we could have uh, used this to talk about the idea that God can see us anywhere. But just think about those four verses for a little bit. If you think a YouTube algorithm uh, is scary because it knows things about you, what about those those verses? You know when I sit, when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. You know when I go out, when I lie down. Um, before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. Um, that is even more powerful than Facebook uh, or YouTube can do. Um, so here's, here's the thought behind that this morning. As you think about that Psalm 139, we have to become comfortable with the idea that God knows our thoughts and words and emotions before we even say them. So think about that for a little bit. Probably, hopefully you've already thought about this and, and settled in with that idea, but that can be very uncomfortable for some people. And I'm going to give you just, just a few seconds to let that sink in this morning. You have to become comfortable with that idea. If we talk about an infinite, almighty, all-knowing God, uh, He knows your thoughts before you think them, your words before you say them, um, your emotions before they begin to rise. Uh, and I want to tie this into a passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, um, because this is going to be helpful for us in becoming comfortable with this idea that God knows all these things. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul is talking about how he doesn't um, live or fight or think like the world does. Um, he sees it as a follower of Christ. He lives life on a different plane. Um, and it's not about 
um, how smart or strong or talented he is or we are. It's about how great God is. His focus is completely changed from himself uh, towards God. The entire goal of Paul's existence, and hopefully we could say the same, is to make him known and to make him famous. Um, so I want to read you this, this passage of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 uh, from the message, and I'm going to emphasize the specific part there. I think it's verse 5. Uh, the message says it this way. We use, because our, our, our mindset is different, the message writes it this way. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Now that's the phrase I want to emphasize. Fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. The next verse, our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. So let's go back to that phrase, fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. That is a tough challenge, isn't it? A tough thing to think about that every uh, thought, impulse, and emotion is shaped by Christ-like thoughts. Think about how often your mind strays into unhealthy places. Times when uh, you give way to fear and worry or anxiety and stress. Um, times when you become jealous of something or anger or bitterness start to, to creep in. Um, think about how often we get sidetracked from this healthy thinking and living that Paul describes and we give way to thoughts and habits that are not helpful or God-honoring. Um, just as a side note here, I would say there's uh, one of the best things we can do is constantly refocus on prayer and scripture to help us stay focused on those things. But we all have those days where we get sidetracked and stressed out and angry and bitter. Um, and the message doesn't use this phrase, but I'm going to read the, the rest of this, the same verses to you in uh, another version. But at least most other versions say that Paul says that the goal is to take captive every thought to obey Christ. He's saying we need to tune our mind into the things of God and take captive is literally what it is, to capture your thoughts before they get too far ahead of you, to capture them and bring them back. Um, so we need to tune our mind into the things of God so that the, the algorithms, the, the commercials that play in our mind become life-giving thoughts of thankfulness and praise and worship and focus on the goodness and the greatness of God. They um, cause us to think about love for our neighbors and our friends and even our enemies, as Scripture would say. Uh, in Colossians chapter 3, it says, um, If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. So we're, we're talking a lot about our minds today and focusing our thoughts and things. So, um, And that can be more, it's easy to say, right? Um, so make that your prayer for today. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you capture those thoughts before they start headed down that rail and steam full steam ahead. Um, those thoughts that lead us down the wrong path. Ask uh, through prayer um, God to help you capture those things. And it is a tough challenge, but I want to read that uh, again. I want to read that verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, um, using a you know ESV, NIV. All you kind of read it this way. This is probably the ESV. Verse 3, 2 Corinthians 10. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. And remember, that's what Paul is talking about. Verse 4, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, it kind of sounds like the message there at the end. Um, but the point I want to emphasize is in verse 4. Um, the weapons that we fight with have divine power to demolish strongholds, and that's what we have to uh, that's what we have to believe and have confidence in. So if you are ready for battle today, um, the first step we can do is let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time this morning. We've spent been challenged by your word about our thoughts. Um, and we know that there's a credible battle in our mind sometimes uh, to keep focused on you, um, to practice joy and hope. Uh, in, the, in the world we live in, we are sometimes overwhelmed and um, fear and emotion, jealousy, bitterness, anger, all those things slip in. 
We ask today, uh, as we would every day, that your, your spirit guide us, um, that before our thoughts get ahead of us, we have taken them captive to bring them into um, submission to your will, um, that you, you change our thoughts um, to be more like Paul has described for us today. And there's probably someone out there who struggles with uh, a certain emotion or certain thoughts every day. I pray for that person today, Lord, that you would speak loudly and clearly. When those moments happen, that um, a flag would be raised and they'd become aware of that and begin to, to retune, take those thoughts captive and tune them into what you need to say. Uh, we thank you again for this time this morning. Uh, I pray a blessing on those that are watching. Uh, may we bring honor and glory to you today and ask this in Christ's name. Uh, the plan for this week is to uh, record Sunday service, but should something change for whatever reason that we can't be in the building, uh, we'll do a, a Facebook Live either from here or my house or somewhere um, in the cold. So anyway, have a great day. Uh, we'll see you soon.